Welcome to the Get Fit Guys, quick and dirty tips to slim down and shape up. My name is Ben Greenfield. I'm the Get Fit Guy. And in today's episode, you're going to get my top two tips to get fit with just a few minutes a week. The fitness world seems to have been recently taken by storm with news of high-intensity interval training sessions for gaining maximum fitness with minimum time. Perhaps it's because we're all so busy that we just want to get as many fitness results as we can without putting in too many hours in the gym. But high-intensity interval training isn't exactly a complete newsflash. Two years ago, I published Get Fit Guy episode number 56, which I'll link to in the show notes for you over at quickanddirtytips.com, and the title of that was called How to Do High Intensity Interval Training. Later, I released episode number 130, which I'll also link to for you, and that one was called What's the Minimum Amount of Exercise You Can Do? But new information about high-intensity interval training has renewed the interest in getting maximum results with minimal time, sparked by a study published last month in the Journal of Experimental Physiology, and the study was titled, Intermittent and Continuous High-Intensity Exercise Induce Similar Acute but Different Chronic Muscle Training Adaptations. Don't worry, I'll explain that one to you in just a second. And then there was another study that was published just a couple weeks later, and this one was entitled The Effect of 24 Sessions of High-Intensity Aerobic Interval Training Carried Out at Either a High or Moderate Frequency. And I'll explain that one in today's episode too. As a matter of fact, in today's episode, you'll find out exactly what makes this new research extremely interesting and groundbreaking if you want to get maximum results with minimum time. And you'll discover whether you can really get fit with just a few short bouts of high-intensity exercise each week. You'll learn two different ways to get fit with high-intensity interval training. So this first study that was published in the Journal of Experimental Physiology looked into whether you should mix up your interval training or if it's okay to just do the same type of interval training sessions each week. Now, in the study, researchers took one group of exercisers and had them complete six weeks of a high-intensity interval training session that consisted of four 30-second all-out cycling bouts with four minutes of recovery between each of those 30-second maximum efforts. On a separate day, that same group did one long effort of four minutes. Now, that long effort of four minutes burnt the same number of calories as the stop-and-go 30-second effort session. And that means that this group mixed up the intensity and the time length of their intervals. And then after six weeks, the researchers measured improvements in athletic performance by having these exercisers ride as hard as possible for a specified period of time. And they measured things like blood and tissue samples. Well, then the researchers measured the fitness response again, but this time, rather than using these stop-and-go intervals, they instead simply had the participants complete steady, continuous four-minute workouts. Now, although the researchers were careful to make sure that these steady, continuous four-minute workouts burnt the same number of calories and expended the same energy as the stop-and-go workouts, it turns out that mixing stop-and-go efforts, like short 30-second efforts, with continuous efforts, like four-minutes efforts, resulted in greater fitness gains and a slower loss of fitness compared with just doing continuous steady-state efforts. The researchers sum this up by saying, despite similar acute signaling responses to the four-minute and the interval training protocols, training with the four-minute protocol did not increase the maximum activity or the protein content of a range of mitochondrial markers. So what's the takeaway message from that? Well, if you're going to do high-intensity interval training, basically, you'll get better results if you mix things up and do different time lengths and intensities when you do your intervals. So for example, if you're doing cardio workouts three times per week, a really good scenario would be to do four to eight short 30-second bursts on your first day of cardio two to four longer, four-minute, continuous energy sessions on the second day of your cardio, and perhaps one long 10 to 30-minute cardio effort on the last day. And that way, you're always keeping your body guessing and you're enhancing your fitness response and the amount of time those workouts actually stick with you. 
Now, the second study looked into how many interval training sessions you can actually do or should do per week. And in this study, which was published by the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, researchers had a group of exercisers perform a total of 24 high-intensity interval training sessions over either three weeks or eight weeks. This means that some of the exercisers worked out three times a week, but some of the exercisers worked out almost every day and sometimes twice on the same day. Well, at the end of the study, the group who did three interval training sessions a week improved their endurance capacity by about 11%. But the group that exercised daily or multiple times per day actually didn't improve and in many cases experienced a decline in fitness. Eventually, the group that exercised more frequently did indeed see an improvement in their fitness, but only after nearly two weeks of rest, suggesting that that frequent and exhausting protocol actually dug them into an overtraining hole that only rest and recovery could bring them out of. So what's the takeaway from this study? Well, you can get fitness results one of two ways, either by consistently doing interval training sessions just a few times a week, such as three cardio sessions that I alluded to earlier, or by working yourself out to complete exhaustion with multiple frequent hard training sessions, then completely recovering for a period of days with almost no training at all. Well, I don't know about you, but that former scenario of just keeping things consistent a few times a week seems far more healthy and sustainable than that latter scenario and less likely to get you injured, sick, or make you feel just plain miserable. And by the way, for reasons I outline in an article I'm going to link to in the show notes called Look, Feel, and Perform Like an Ancient Spartan Warrior, How to Become an Absolute Physical Beast, I still include not just high-intensity interval training sessions in my own routine, but also occasional long stamina-building endurance training sessions. But I don't do these long sessions because they're superior for building fitness. I do them because I've personally chosen to compete in competitive events like Ironman triathlon, adventure racing, and Spartan racing, all of which require longer periods of time spent on your feet and also require some mental and physical endurance that's really only built by doing those longer sessions. However, if you just want to look good and burn fat fast, you can definitely get away with just a few minutes of exercise a week. You should do it using a combination of different types of high-intensity interval training sessions, and you should never pile those sessions into day-after-day sessions or multiple times-a-day sessions, but instead just do a few hard sessions about three times a week. Now, there's one other quick thing that I wanted to mention to you, and that is that you can now vote for me to be America's top personal trainer. You can do that over at the Men's Health Competition. Just go to bengreenfieldfitness.com slash men's health to vote. That's bengreenfieldfitness.com slash men's health. And until next time, this is Ben Greenfield, the Get Fit Guy, asking you, what are you waiting for? Go get fit.